What's up, y'all, and welcome back to From the Dark. I am Marcus, also known as EMB, and as you can see here, we've reloaded the area, and the clerics have gone on their merry way. Uh, they have headed down into the catacombs, and yeah. Uh, if we had waited, by the way, to talk to Patches and, until now, we would actually have missed him in, in the catacombs. He's going to move down uh, into the Tomb of the Giants. Uh, but, uh, Eldritchness reminded me of a certain dialogue trigger for killing the Gaping Dragon that might mess up something else we're trying to do. So today, instead of going down into the depths to take on Gaping Dragon, we're actually going to go face off against the Gargoyles. And on the topic of things other people have been telling me about, um, Illusory Wall did some more research into the dialogue trigger for, uh, the Crestfallen Warriors first dialogue about Laurentius because uh, the wikis were all saying that you had to actually uh, unlock the door to the depths or something like that and I knew that wasn't right uh, that's I showed uh, in this playthrough that you can actually uh, after defeating Capra and getting oops I wasn't did not even see that guy uh, after defeating Capra and getting the key you can immediately go and get that dialogue but Illusory Wall, not satisfied, I-dubs, never satisfied. Got to test and make sure the exact trigger. Uh, and actually found uh, that simply encountering the Capra Demon is enough for you to, to get that dialogue. And I just think it's, it's, pretty damn, it's pretty damn amazing that we're still finding out new stuff about this game. At, at this point in its life cycle, it's just pretty amazing, and it just kind of speaks to the dedication and passion of the fan base, particularly folks like I Dub. Let's see. Go ahead and reinforce our longsword up to plus ten. We will be upgrading some more weapons soon, guys. I promise. All right. Now, what I want to show you is at this point, we have a plus 10 long sword. If you compare it to the Drake sword, there is a technic, there's, there's three points of damage difference according to the stats, right? Like at this point, we have 160 base damage plus 37 from scaling. So 197 damage versus 200 flat damage with no scaling. Uh, the Drake sword weighs twice as much too the weight is 6.0 as opposed to the 3.0 longsword but a bigger issue is the fact that the drake sword cannot be improved or buffed using uh spells or items like see we have the gold pine resin we can use it on the longsword but as soon as i change the drake sword no longer is that an option for us so uh, the Drake Sword does have a couple of other like hidden little benefits that we'll talk about later, but um, <coughs> more or less, our long sword is is just better at this point. It's just kind of um, superior. Uh, another thing uh, a lot of people talked about as I kindle this bonfire so that it will be able to provide us with ten Estus flasks in the future. Um, Something else a lot of people mentioned is that uh, I had talked about perhaps a glitch dialogue uh, from Crestfallen where he was talking about the old man. I thought perhaps he was talking about um, Big Hat Logan. But a, a lot of people said they thought that he was talking about Laurentius. And actually after sitting and thinking about it for a little bit, I think he probably was too. Probably not glitched, but it's just kind of interesting to see at least Crestfallen's perception of the age of Laurentius there. He didn't seem that old to me, really. Our longsword's doing us a lot better now. Kind of just tearing through these guys. And we want to get up here. We want to try to... Oops. Oh, no regain. No regain, Marcus. No regain. No regain, bro. <laughs> oh, that's a backstab. He was fucking sharp about getting that backstab. No, not again. Not, God damn it. It's not Bloodborne. I've been playing Wreckfist. I've been playing Bloodborne for Wreckfist, so... Kind of got used to... There. 
kind of got used to how quickly you can heal in Bloodborne. Can't heal that fast here. Oh well. Another dead Balder Knight. This area, we're going to fight the Gargoyles, as I said, but originally, uh, the Gargoyles were not the boss that you would fight here. Originally, the Centipede Demon was going to be there, and they they changed. This is this is from interviews. Uh, actually, the Design Works interview is where uh, Miyazaki-san talked about this, but um, their original enemy that was there was Centipede Demon, but they, they changed it because it didn't really make any sense from a lore perspective as to why there would be a uh, centipede demon on top on top of here like it just kind of doesn't make sense uh, from a lore perspective so they put the gargoyles there instead now it, he, he said it doesn't really make sense but in some ways it actually would have made sense just from the simple fact that both capra demon and taurus demon are, are from Lost Isleth as well, and they are found in the in the Undead Burg, which is kind of odd. Now, pay attention to this summon sign, Lawtrek summon sign, kind of a white color there. And then when you come up here to Solaire's summon sign, totally gold. Uh, this this is your your proof positive that Solaire is a sun bro and Lawtrek isn't. More to the point, if you summon Lawtrek. And uh, you beat the boss, he won't give you a Sunlight Medal if you only summon him. But if you only summon Solaire, he will give you a Sunlight Medal. Obviously, if you summon both, you get the Sunlight Medal. But also, watch his entrance animation here. Standard one. And, of course, Solaire is going to give us the, uh, the Praise of the Sun emote. Everybody, chat, let me see you praise your sons. <laughs> And especially when you have them standing side by side next to each other, you'll be able to tell the difference pretty easily. So, I, it's just something that people, to this very day, try to argue over, and it never made a damn bit of sense to me. Alright, my little sun bro slash white phantom evil guy, law trek dude, ganking squad, let's go take care of some gargoyles. The design of the gargoyles is something that that went through several iterations as well. We'll talk about that after the fight though. Hold on. Let's let's get our gold pine on. This is going to go pretty quick. Oh, I was too slow with my roll. Oh well. You're dead. <laughs> Just stand there then, Solaire. That's some lightning bolts or something, man. <laughs> Fat rolling in. There. <laughs> You guys are useless. Got the gargoyle helm. That's kind of lucky. Lucky drop. Twin humanities from the boss. Sunlight medal from Solaire. Once again, if you just summon Lautrec, you don't get the sunlight medal. So, yeah. Uh, but the gargoyle design <clears throat> was actually done by... I think I think her name's Hatsuyama Mai-san. And uh, uh, Hatsuyama, or, or Mai, she... Uh, she, it was her first time working with Miyazaki-san, so uh, he said he wanted to do something a little bit more uh, orthodox uh, to help 
kind of get them used to working together, but also because he intended for this to be <clears throat> here, kind of the first major boss of the game, he wanted it to be a little bit more of a, a typical boss, but he had a lot of input on the design in terms of like its technological level and how armored it was. Here we get a good look at the Bell of the Awakening. This is, once again, the, uh, the PC port with the uh, DS Fix mod. You can actually see things pretty well. It's good stuff. Get a good look at Sin's Fortress there in that little cutscene as well. Uh, and remember, the Bell of Awakening, so far we've heard of it, I think, uh, we heard of it from Oscar of Astora. We can see Sin's... actually, we can... hold on, let me get up here. We can see Sin's Fortress pretty well over there, actually, now that I look at it. Which means... There's the old church, right over there. Yeah, well, maybe after we go down the bell tower. Yeah, there's the old church right over there. This is the Dark Root Garden. No, that's not Dark Root Garden. Dark Root Garden's on the other side. This is the old church, and there's a path that leads across from here straight over to, that's gonna be the entrance to Sin's Fortress right there. Interesting, hee <laughs> hee. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I think the only thing we've heard about the Bells of Awakening so far has been from, from Oscar Vistora, who told us that journey to ring the Bell of Awakening, and then from uh, the Crestfallen Warrior, who said there's actually two. But ring them and something happens. Brilliant, right? Nobody really knows exactly what happens when you ring the bells. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kherim. The power, and thou art a friend. For thee, a warm welcome. Cometh thou to confess what you accuse? For indeed, your sin is my domain. So he's also from Kareem, uh, similar to Law Trek. He's selling these purging stones. Got the indictment. S a slip sold by Bishop of Vilka, goddess of sin. If you are killed by an invader, use this to report the crime of that trespasser. The indicted player will be added to a list of unfortunate souls who will one day face the wrath of the Blades of the Dark Moon. So, <clears throat> here we see that this is a Bishop of Vilka that we are talking to. And Vilka is known as the goddess of sin. He also sells Bones of the Undead. Uh, the goddess of sin, Velka, oversees this list of the guilty who have disrespected the gods or their covenants and shall one day face the wrath of the Blades of the Dark Moon. Karmic Justice, Miracle of the Black-Haired Witch Velka. Temporary auto counter versus heavy damage. For each sin there is a punishment and it is the task of Goddess Velka to define the sin and mete out the punishment. So, <laughs> Velka... Velka decides who, what's wrong and what's right and exactly how much punishment you're going to get for doing something wrong. We will mess around with Karmic Justice. I'm, I'm actually thinking we're probably going to have to do a, a, a full-on True Artorius build with this character just so that we can play with every spell and every miracle in the game and talk about all their mechanics, but we'll deal with that later. Medium for casting miracles of the gods, this black tuft of hair that serves as a talisman belongs to Velka, goddess of sin. It casts miracles not by drawing upon faith, but intelligence. Um, Velka's talisman, uh, the fact that it's a tuft of hair is no coincidence. Uh, I actually have a Japanese copy of Dark Souls 1. My, my, my mom's, my, my mom's, my mother-in-law is uh, sending one over to me from Japan. So I'll actually be talking a little bit more about Velka stuff after I get that, and I can show you the Japanese text, and we can talk about it a little more. And then the Bite Rings, Blood Bite and Poison Bite. Here's two of them. 
Uh, one of the infamous bite rings commissioned by Sir Arstor of Kareem. Despite the dreadful rumors surrounding its creation, this ring is an unmistakable asset in its ability to help prevent bleeding or poison. And then there's the Ring of Sacrifice. This mystical ring was created in a sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. Its wearer will lose nothing upon death, but the ring itself breaks. But yeah, we will talk more about Velka stuff and Kareem stuff uh, after that, that arrives, because yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Best voice actor ever. <laughs> Greetings and welcome back. I am pleased to see the preserving and humanity. I can't remember if you actually have to be human to have him say that or not, but let's see, let's get a book of the guilty. Thou art welcome any time. It is only human to commit a sin. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we, we we will be talking to him again pretty soon. But now we've actually defeated a boss. I want to go back and check out Firelink and see if maybe something hasn't changed over there. Uh, we may actually have to to quit and load a couple of times to kind of force time to advance on a specific quest that we're doing right now, but we'll see. Whee! <laughs> but yeah, you guys saw how effective that long sword was with the gold pine resin. Anything with gold pine resin is effective as hell against those gargoyles. Mirror's Edge Path. Oh, I didn't make it. Uh oh, I hope I didn't get myself stuck. Okay, good. Oh, well now. Where are your friends, Petrus? Uh, oh, you again? Me? Uh, I've become separated from my lady. I've scoured near and far, but no sight of her. Where could she have gone? My lady... To think I swore to protect you with my life. Your Highness, where have you gone? I am entirely to blame for this. Oh, woe is me. I am unworthy, deathly so. I like that Your Highness that he threw in there. Well, um, another point to the fact that she is indeed uh, a royalty. Like, uh, not, not just uh, maybe a high-ranking member of... Like, we know she's from a family that the land is named after. She's from the House of Thurland, the youngest daughter of the House of Thurland, from the land Thurland. Uh, and we know it's a, a bit of a religious land, but per perhaps she's a royal, like, just straight up, like a princess. Oh, I'm sorry. Miracles, was it? Sometimes I lose myself. Pay me no mind. You don't seem too tore up over that. Hmm. No exit dialogue. Hey, let's talk again. Oh, I'm so, so. And if we buy something, I don't want to buy something that expensive, but <clears throat> let's get a heal. No exit dialogue, huh? All right. Very, very. He's, he's back. The clerics are gone. And he is claiming to have lost them. Oh, hello. Myself. He knows nothing of it. Goodbye, then. Actually, let's let's do a talk menu just to make sure. I want to make sure I don't miss any dialogues, if possible. Yeah, he's... Then you will be ready to yeah, fire... no. <laughs> you, any comments? Why, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to make it. Oh, somebody rang the bell. 
Wait. Was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there? No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> and for your namesake dialogue? Well, what are you going to do? I've already decided. I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. <laughs> One more interesting thing that we can do thanks to the order that we've taken through the game. Oh, you asshole, he's not here right now, damn it. Alright, we need to speak with Lawtrek. Hold on, let's try a qu uh, quit load and see if he can come back for us. There he is. Uh, Lawtrek tends to come and go after a certain point, just kind of randomly. So if he's not here for you, you can just load it back up and... Ah, you certainly are keeping busy. Care to pay for a useful tip? Why, yes indeed. A wise choice indeed. Maiden Thuraland and her followers recently arrived in this land, but she became stranded deep below the catacombs. Her followers either fled or were reduced to hollows, leaving Maiden Thuraland all alone. Not a bad tip, huh? A new bar cleric would be replete with humanity. A nubile no young cleric. Uh, I mean, we can talk about the word nubile thrown in there, but, uh... Lautrec knows that she's stranded down there. He is the type of guy who will take humanity wherever he can get it, but he's not going after it. So, there's something going on there, but... It's also, how did you know about this? Hmm? That tip I gave you? Ah, I heard it from a fleeing old man. That poor bastard. All his robes and trinkets won't help him now. <laughs> a fleeing old man running away from danger. A coward. Hmm. Robes and trinkets, huh? Hmm. You again. Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. That was a good tip, Law Trek. I appreciate it. A fleeing old man whose robes and trinkets will no longer do him any good. Oh, hello there. Have you spoken with Sir Lautrec? Splendid. In the depths of the catacombs, Milady slipped off the giant's coffin and into a hole. Her two companions are no longer human, and the lass weeps in solitude. Right now, you could do as you please with her. The poor little purebred is entirely helpless. <laughs> Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. So Petrus wants us to do away with Thurland, with the maiden Thurland. Uh, and it's very interesting that he judges our character. He confides this secret in us once he hears that we've spoken with Sir Lautrec. Because at this point he knows that not only do we know about uh, his abandonment of his lady and her followers, but also he kind of made a judgment of our character based off of our association with Zoro Law Trek. So it's kind of both characters are giving you hints that things aren't things aren't all on the up and up, you know. In the depths of the catacomb, her two com <laughs> come again. Yeah. This this quest will will continue will indeed continue, 
but we'll have to go down in into the Tomb of the Giants in order to actually free the Maiden Thurland if we can. And then we can proceed with this. But there might be one more person who knows something about Petrus. I don't know if we can get the dialogue yet, but we might as well go and check. You guys can join me when we get there. Hi there, ho there, neighbor. Good time. Lord, Lord of all is thy dedication to sin. Laudable is thy dedication to sin. Hmm. Has thou acquaintance with Petrus of Thurn? I wager you, you too has likely found much in common. For is he not too drenched in sin? <laughs> It is only human to commit a sin. <laughs> Catch you guys next time.